Hi, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I'm excited that you're here with me today to talk about treating broken capillaries. Yes, that's right. I had broken capillaries around my nose that I've been dealing with for the longest time. And then I had an incident that happened last weekend that made me decide to go in and actually have them treated for a change. Before I get into that, if you're not a subscriber and you're interested in all things anti-aging, skincare, makeup, girly girl topics, I hope you'll subscribe and click that little bell. That will just notify you of my videos which I post Wednesdays and Saturdays. Now let's get down to this. To begin with, I have always had broken capillaries around my nose probably for about the last 10 years and I had them treated once and they went away for a bit and then they came back and I just never went in and had them treated again. And the thing about the spider veins around your nose is that if you go in and have them treated with a laser, you do need to go back maybe every month or six weeks, maybe a couple of more times to make sure that they're finally gotten rid of. I never did do that and I just let them come back. But I did something to myself last weekend that made me kind of freaked out and kind of afraid. And so I decided I needed to call them to see if I could get in and have them taken care of. Here is what happened. As many of you know, I have been using this Derminator 2 on my face about every six weeks. And I believe that last weekend was the fourth time I did it. I waited till Saturday night because you really do need to have 24 hours without makeup. So we went out with some friends of ours on Saturday night to dinner. And then after dinner, I came home and cleansed my face, came right here in the makeup room and actually did the Derminator 2. You put a little head with the needles on the end of this device and I had probably used it about three times so they were getting a little bit dull I think. I always use alcohol between to clean them so they were very clean but they felt a little dull and the instructions that came along with the Derminator 2 said that while on an incision which I have one there that's my Mohs incision you can go up to like 1.5 millimeters on the rest of your face you should really stay on the 0.5 millimeter depth and I had done that in the first three times that I had done the Derminator but the needles got a little bit dull and so against the recommendations I put the needle depth up to 1.5 millimeters and started doing my face. Well, that seemed to be fine and I thought, oh good, I'm saving money, I'm getting a little extra use out of those dull needles. Well, that was all well and good until the next day, Sunday afternoon, I was heading to Kirkland's. We're doing some remodeling and if you're interested in seeing my before and after of this massive paint job I'm doing on my first floor, I'm painting my kitchen cabinets and you'll get to see the before and after of that. Then again, go ahead and subscribe because that video is coming. But anyway, I was heading to Kirkland's and I happened to glance at myself in the rearview mirror and went, oh my gosh, I didn't just have these red veins, which I've always had. I had a hugely long spider vein here. It was about an inch long and was right in this nasal fold area. I tried to get a picture of it, but unfortunately I could not get the picture to show the red vein, but I was terrified. In fact, I could almost not look at the rest of my face because I had not followed the directions and I went from the 0.5 needle depth they recommend up to 1.5 millimeter needle depth and I thought, oh my gosh, I have ruined my face. These spider veins are probably all over my face. Well, later on, I got the courage up, I guess, to look at it and realized it was only the one. But I was still afraid because it was very, very dark and you could see it through makeup. And I thought, oh no, I've just ruined my skin. But the next day, which was Monday, I called the Plastic Surgery Center here in Wichita and I was amazed because they said, hey, we can get you in with our best person who deals with that this afternoon at one o'clock. So I felt like, oh good, it's meant to be. And I went in and had a treatment session with laser with Sasha Parks, who is one of the estheticians there. And I will show you the conversation I had with her in just a few minutes. But first, let's talk about these little spider veins. They're known as spider veins or broken capillaries. And the medical term is telangiolatasia. Telangiolatasia, that's it. And the best way to treat them when you're on your face is to use laser. You can use sclerotherapy when they're on your legs, but if you try to use sclerotherapy here, it can cause complications, which you don't want. And the capillaries that you see are actually just little broken blood vessels or capillaries that are hooked to deeper veins. And so medically, it does not hurt you to laser them, to close them off and make them blend back into the skin. And aesthetically, it is sometimes very nice to do that. And these veins have several different causes. And the first is rosacea. If you have rosacea and suffer from a reddening of the skin, that can increase your broken capillaries. And they can also be caused when you wash your face by scrubbing that area too hard or using water that is too hot. They also tend to worsen during pregnancy when you have more blood flow to the skin. And also if you work outdoors in the sun or in the wind for extended periods, that can also cause broken capillaries. And they can also happen a little more as we age because the skin tends to thin out a little bit and they become much more noticeable. 
And drinking too much alcohol on a regular basis can also cause the face to flush and those veins to become redder and to stay open. And so you get that alcoholic flush. And simple genetics can come into play as well. So if your mother had spider veins, there's a good chance you will too. So now that we know a little bit more about them, let's get into the treatment information. And while I wasn't able to actually show you the laser procedure itself, I did get a great interview with Sasha Parks. So with doing laser treatments on the face, mm -hmm. with the skin being so thin, you can have some bruising, and typically that'll go away within five days. Awesome. Could take two to three treatments. Oh, okay. For the vascularities to be completely gone. Okay, and about how much does it cost per treatment to do? It's 125 for okay. today. Do the veins go away right away, or do they take time? So typically what we see is the veins will turn red uh -huh. and so you'll see that instant edema or inflammation okay. in that area that we treat okay. and that can last for 30 minutes to 48 hours. Uh -huh. All right. Another scenario would be the veins can turn purple. Everyone's a little different and then there's also times where you can see a vein that completely goes white and blanches out. Okay. So those are the three scenarios that I typically see when I treat veins. Uh -huh. Say exactly how it's going to be with you. I, we'll just wait no, and no. see. Yeah. Okay. Do I need to do anything to take care of the area afterward? With topical laser, there really is nothing as far as home care that you have to do. Now, uh, here are a few pictures of me right after the treatment session. And the treatment didn't hurt. It felt like little rubber bands. But as you can tell, the spider veins got a little bit darker and they were a little bit puffy, but everything looked fairly normal. And this picture was taken today, four days after. And as you can tell, it looks like those veins have largely gone away. And Sasha did ask me to come back again in a month, so I went ahead and scheduled another appointment because we want to make sure that this time I get those veins taken care of. Now here are some tips to avoid spider veins in the first place. The first tip is to use warm water when you wash your face because hot water can cause those capillaries to break. The second tip is to use sunscreen every day. This is the one I'm using right now, which I really like, which is the Color Science Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield. It's wonderful when you use Retin-A. And a third tip is not to over imbibe in terms of alcohol. In fact, I have not had a drink in 19 years and I think my skin looks a little better because of it. And if you already have spider veins and would like to cover them up, use a green tinted primer. Now, if you're not a subscriber and would like more anti-aging tips for those over 50 or those over 40, whatever, more anti-aging tips, period, I hope you'll subscribe. And when you click that little bell, that just notifies you of my future videos. Now, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day, and today is no exception. I've been using these Power Thoughts cards from Louise Hay. Whoa, I dropped them. Come on, Louise. Let's get a great Power Thought for today. Okay. Oh, I love this. My life works beautifully. My life works beautifully. Love that affirmation. Everything in my life works now and forevermore. So friends, let's remember that our thoughts and words are powerful and that we can be beautiful on the outside, beautiful on the inside, and have a truly beautiful second half. Take care. See you next time.